Hello, good weekend. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets from an intermarket analysis perspective, as always. Okay, we're happy to discuss the uh, European markets. Now, be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. This video is being brought to you courtesy of uh, CFDs.com, uh, especially since spread buying a CFD brokerage. Be sure to visit the uh, website and certainly take advantage of that potential. Uh, bonus uh, cash offer for all new accounts alternatively you can visit the educational site www.cfds.education to certainly learn more and keep up to date with my charts and analysis okay now let's try and decipher exactly what's happening here in terms of european markets we have the u.s markets finished quite positive and uh, certainly european markets too now let's see exactly um, what the uh, scenario is going into monday now we've had this npc uh, this meeting in china basically uh, now China's economy isn't headed for a hard landing etc etc let's just drag this article over and uh, basically the whole focus is on this China's economy isn't headed for a hard landing and it's dragging on the global economy China's top economic planner said on Sunday but uncertainty and instability in the global economy do pose a risk for the country's growth and health etc China on Saturday acknowledged it faced tough battle to keep the world's number two economy growing by at least 6.5% so therefore that would be interpreted as being bearish Okay, now whilst pushing for uh, a uh, create more jobs and restructuring the straight owned enterprises, the comments as Beijing kicked off its 12 day annual national parliament underscore the challenges facing China as its economy transitions from an investment and export focused economy to one based on service and consumption. So they're trying to reassure us basically we're not headed for a hard landing. Yet a set a growth target of 6.5 to 7 percent, etc. etc. Okay. Now, on Saturday, this is this is a crunch line, by the way, folks, okay? Premier Lee, uh, I'm not going to pronounce the second name because I can't, unfortunately, outlined a series of targets on issues such as energy consumption, job creation, inflation, but few details on how they could be met, okay? So that's the negative line there. Few details on how they could be met, so therefore they're very vague. Many investors had been hoping China would post an aggressive target for fiscal spending to prop up growth, okay? I.e. a stimulus measure, okay? In order to help consumption, but the draft goal of running a fiscal deficit equivalent to three percent of GDP, while up from the previous year's target of two point three, certainly disappointed some. Okay, that's the key line there. Many investors have been hoping for China to post an aggressive. So basically, what he's trying to say is that this fiscal stimulus that everybody had been expecting, and everybody had been buying this market uh, in expectation of that and trying to front run this market, basically didn't occur. Okay, I didn't materialize, and therefore that's supposed to be net negative. Okay. Okay, so I'll just explain this to subscribers as well on the live analysis service. So that's the negative line. So therefore, it's bearish for commodities and it's bearish for overall global growth. And therefore, it's bearish for the Aussie and bearish for the Kiwi and bearish for the FTSE and bearish for all global markets. Okay, right. So now that we've established that, okay, now let's move on to the Chinese renminbi. Okay, because the two key areas this, this week will be the Chinese renminbi and the uh, Euro USD because of the uh, ECB. So if I go up to the Chinese Remember now on the daily chart of China Remember, you can see that we have this topping tail. Yes, we've taken that out. And we have a gap fill resistance just above with the 200 MA. Now, at the start of this year, the market sold off on the fact that the Chinese Remember or the Yuan, uh, as you like to call it, certainly was uh, was certainly uh, moving lower. As you can see here, we started to move lower. And the market's obviously uh, sold off to a large extent. Okay, so now the Yuan itself uh, is, is potentially going to... Uh, to start to move lower again, or i.e. consolidation, or you can call it currency debauchery, etc., etc., and that's going to trigger off this potential risk-off wave. Okay, so with the yuan now potentially topping out, and the yuan starting to move lower, that will cause a risk aversion trade. Okay, and uh, which would obviously force the yen and the euro higher, and the global market equity markets lower. So certainly take that into consideration when trading going into the week ahead. The other trade as well is a euro USD trade now. I bring up the euro USD for you folks. Okay, so if I bring up a daily chart, for example, you can see that we've bounced off this key area at 1.08, and we're now retesting this 1.0 or 1.10, 1.11 level. Even with the ECB, so if we break this key level at 1.1040, then we are looking to potentially move higher. Now, not only is that a factor as well, we also have the bonds kicking in here. And again, that's going to be an interesting feature as well. So if I bring up the chart of the euro bonds, okay, so if I bring up a daily chart, for example, you can see that we are certainly weak and certainly indicating various price action. Now, if I bring up a four-hour chart, you can see that we have this H&S formation. 
So it basically means that you're seeing a top in the bonds, okay, which in turn will cause a uh, a potential bottom in the euro or a rally in the euro, and therefore you're looking at equity markets, so European equity markets going under pressure. And that will may mainly be led by the fact that the Chinese yuan is certainly um, obviously devaluing itself or moving lower, and that obviously uh, negates the uh, bearish effect from a weaker, or should I say the bullish effect, from a weaker yen and a weaker euro, which obviously helps Japan and helps the eurozone. So if those, those two factors are taken out of the equation, then the Europeans suffer uh, at the expense of the Chinese taking world trade, and that obviously sends the equity markets into a risk aversion mode, which uh, in turn helps the yen and the yuan, yen and the uh, euro high and the yuan low. Okay, so that that's uh, those linkages certainly need to be respected. Now the last two or three weeks, unfortunately, they haven't been respected, and the market has been going up in a, um, a vertical mode because of this uh, national parliament from China was expected to uh, to uh, our country more than two point three percent. Okay, of its uh, fiscal budget towards propping up the uh, global uh, markets, so especially commodities. Now, obviously, the markets have been front-running that, and uh, that's no longer the case. Okay, so certainly take that into consideration. Right. Also, now we're looking at energy sector, and we're looking at the uh, the actual uh, banks as well. So let's bring up the European banking sector. Now, we've certainly, on a daily chart, you're seeing that you are potentially into uh, a resistance zone, or you're looking at potential exhaustion in the banking sector, and uh, certainly a conundrum here. In terms of the potential next move, now if I bring up the 60 minute chart for you on the banking stocks, you can see that you're certainly looking at exhaustion. Okay, looking at a potential exhaustion, looking at a market to looking to potentially reverse as well. So that's a zone that we're looking for. The 10 minute chart of the banking stocks, again, you can see that we're into a zone and we've certainly failed and knocking on that resistance zone. It's very unlikely that we're going to move higher. Okay, so that level is certainly going to hold. Okay, now in terms of the rest, let's just bring up the rest. Now, the oil and gas sector as well. Let's just bring up the daily chart of the oil and gas sector. And you can see that we have paced that 200 MA. And we are obviously breaking through this key resistance zone, which is quite impressive to say the least. But you do have a resistance zone here. Okay, so this is a zone that we're potentially going to observe. And again, a zone here. So this is quite an important area. Obviously, we break through. Then you are looking at 350 next, which will take the S&P or you should say European stocks even higher. Now, it's very unlikely for that to occur, given the fact that oil, if I bring up the chart of crude oil, bear with me. OK, so if I bring up a chart of crude oil, OK, future. So on the four hour, you can clearly see that we're into resistance on the daily chart. Obviously, we're into resistance as well. This zone at 36.5. So this zone here is certainly key and it's certainly instrumental in terms of a risk of this uh, model okay so again 36.5 uh, dollars is going to be very important in terms of uh, of uh, trying to work out the next level on this market so again keep an eye out for that okay 36.5 up to 37 as well will act as key resistance okay so very very important now in terms of the uh, equity markets now again mr draghi obviously will dictate in terms of the next movement in the market but from my perspective given the fact that the euro usd has certainly pushed high up to 1.10 and given the fact that uh, we have been ignoring a lot of the bearish data as of late uh, although european uh, pmi certainly have come more or less in line it will be interesting to see what the factory orders are tomorrow in germany and also the uh, japanese data are overnight because we've got mr Kuroda speaking as well and how that will be interpreted now talking about the yen let's move on to the yen whilst we're here okay let's bring up the chart of the yen DJ yen, let's just bring the yen here. Okay, so again, uh, looking at a daily chart of the yen, you are into gap fill support. So that alone will tell you that you are looking at resistance in the Japanese markets, which in turn will obviously force the uh, Asian markets down overnight. If I bring up the chart, the Nikkei as well. Bear with me. Where is the Nikkei? Nikkei, 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 Nikkei. Okay, here we go, Nikkei. So you are into potential gap fill resistance on Nikkei. So it's not a coincidence that you're into gap fill support on the yen and obviously gap fill resistance on the Nikkei. So you are looking at a potential risk off mode here uh, in terms of the Japanese Nikkei, which obviously in turn will force the uh, European markets lower overnight as well, especially given the fact that the Chinese are disappointed in terms of additional fiscal stimulus. Okay, so. So the, expl the explanation, the backdrop from a fundamental perspective is certainly seems to be weak. Especially given the economic data out on Friday as well from the US in terms of the average hourly earnings month on month coming in at minus 0.1%, where they were expected to come out in plus 0.2%. So again, that's a bearish factor as well. Okay, now let's bring up the European stocks now, or Euro stocks itself. Euro stocks 50 is the first index, and let's see where the markets are placed technically now that we know that the fundamental backdrop itself is more or less overtly bearish. Okay, 
The 10 minute start of euro stocks has a H&S formation, therefore you're looking at potential pivot lower. The pivot high is uh, uh, 3055 down to uh, 3015, so you're looking at a 40 point drop, so you're looking at 2875 on the downside, okay, in terms of the euro stocks. Looking at a 60 minute euro stocks, you clearly see. <laughs> Clearly see that we've put it put in a topping tail and now looking to potentially reverse. Okay, go to a daily chart, and you can see that horizontal resistance at 3050 has been held, and therefore you're looking to move lower. Okay. Now let's cross-reference that with the SP Europe 350, and you can clearly see that you are into resistance. Also cross-reference that with the Euro stock 600. So if I bring up a daily chart, you clearly see that you're into resistance and looking to potentially move lower okay now moving on to the german dax let's go to the weekly chart you can see that you are into resistance on the weekly as well uh, the daily chart will certainly give you a better uh, in insight you can certainly see that we are holding that resistance zone here we still have the unfilled gap at uh, 9950 to close but for now we are holding resistance and potentially moving lower going to a smaller time frame so 60 minute chart on the euro on the german dax and you can clearly see that we are putting in this potential hns formation we're holding that resistance zone as well okay so therefore you are looking for weakness down below okay so this is a zone that we're going to watch so certainly indicating weakness going to a 10 minute chart and you can clearly see here okay uh, let's just bring this up for you okay so here we go let's just take this pivot low from here take it up to here and you shall see clearly a hns formation so this is the formation that I'll be looking at going into tomorrow from my perspective. So obviously you've got this left shoulder here. You're obviously pushed higher for the head. And then obviously you're looking at the neckline, looking to potentially break lower. So the next level you are looking at from 8 to 8 now, 9,900 down to the pivot low at 8,730. So you're looking at 170 point drop below, okay, on the downside. So certainly keep an eye out for that potential formation. Okay, moving on to the French CAC now. Let's just quickly shift over. Uh, going over to the daily chart, the French CAC, you can see that we've closed that gap fill and you are into gap fill resistance. Previous support equals resistance and therefore moving lower. 60 minute chart, the French CAC again, you've had that potential topping tail, you've broken out this upward sloping trend line and now you're looking for a potential move lower. So certainly keep an eye on the French CAC from that perspective and looking to move lower. Going to a 10 minute chart, the French CAC, same type of formation, same type of uh, expectation here as well. You're clearly looking at HS formation. So again, keep an eye on the market from here on in okay so your left shoulder your head and then you're looking for the right shoulder then looking for a potential break lower and you're looking to potentially target that on fill gap below at 4370 so that's potentially a zone for the downside on the euro stock or should i say the french cac okay now the last the last indices that we're looking at now is a FTSE 100 the weekly chart you clearly see that we are into a diagonal trend line resistance so it'll be interesting to see we, whether we can hold the FTSE 100 certainly is in no man's land at the moment. It has broken out that doji, so very impressive. The next potential resistance you're looking at is 6220, 6210. That's the zone that you'll be looking at, so that should be interesting in terms of the next potential move. The daily chart certainly has resistance, a so holding resistance at 6195. Very unlikely for us to break out above that. The 10 minute chart did have this HS formation, but it certainly negated that towards the close. And it'll be interesting to see whether or not it can sustain that, given the fact that, like I explained, the Chinese uh, fiscal stimulus was nowhere near any, what anybody expected. So again, disappointment and looking for a potential sell-off. And bear in mind, you do have an unfilled gap at 6,120 on the downside for the FTSE 100. So that's uh, the gap that we more than likely potentially be targeting on the downside. Okay, so everything certainly is indicating bearish to me for European markets. So don't be surprised if you're looking to gap lower overnight and go into a risk aversion mode. Okay, I think that's a market wrap in terms of the European indices. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Cool.